Here we go. The thing is, subtractive synthesis is relatively simple once you understand its basic blocks. You can of course connect just about anything to anything else and experiment and go wild. But as a primer, here's a quick explanation of how to set up this system as a classic monosynth, not unlike Minimoog. Everything starts with the gate and pitch. Because left to their own devices, the oscillators just do an infinite long bright note that goes like this. The gate is the on-off switch and start and stop switch, the rhythmic conductor that tells every part of the synth when to start or stop a function. With the gate in, on, off, on, off, but no pitch yet. Anything I do from the MIDI keyboard, it just tells them on, off. That's all gate does. Now if I connect the pitch, it never stops. So we need both. In order to send gate and pitch to multiple destinations, let's use the multi here to make clones of that signal. So pitch goes here and gate goes here. Now we have three clones of both pitch and gate. The pitch clones will go to the one volt per octave here, here, and here of each oscillator. Now we control the pitch of all of them. The gate clones will go to the first envelope generator and the second envelope generator. The envelope generator sculpts the nuances of your on-off gate signal. Whereas the simple gate only allows us to do an on-off. If we use the envelope generator, we can make it real slow. Or real short. Attack is how long it takes to the gate to reach full power once triggered. Release is how long it takes for the gate to fully close after the signal stops. It's like a delayed closure. Decay and sustain interact. The sustain is really an optional second stage of intensity over time for the gate signal. If the sustain is left at the top of its range, then no change occurs and the decay has no effect. If we lower the sustain, however, we're now setting how low we want this second stage to be and how long it takes for this stage to be fully reached is dictated by the decay time. <laughs> First stage goes down, the second stage lower. So it's attack, then some time dictated by the decay that leads us to the lower floor, dictated by sustain level. Then when we release the key, the release tells us how long before we return to no signal. So the gate signal is now being cloned and sent to two different envelope generators, which polish the gate signal. And one can be sent to the VCA output and the other one will be sent for this scenario to the filter. Meanwhile, the pitch has been cloned to control each of the three oscillators, and we can send the output of each oscillator to our mixer, and from there blend them into a single signal that we'll send into the filter. The Q106A has either individual waveform outputs or one from which we can select manually which wave we want. Second one, third one. And then we can take the output from the noise that is included inside the sample and hold plus plus, which is a million functions. But one of them is that it has a noise generator and we can put that in channel number four. And from the mixer, we can take the lowest output and send that to the input of the filter. And ultimately from the filter output, we can go into the input of the VCA, which is our output. The filter journey is divided in two stages. Stage one is that we can set a cutoff level and a resonance level. The cutoff frequency is the line in the sand between the part of the sound that is going to remain unchanged and the part of the sound that we're going to start removing. In a low pass filter, we start removing high frequencies and we let the lows stay. The highs are gone, but the low end is, is still there. the frequency is where that changes. In an high pass filter, that's the opposite. We're gonna start removing the low frequencies and we let pass the highs. All the lows are gone and the highs are still there. The resonance is a boost that we can add right at that line in the sand to create more dramatic effects around where we're cutting. And it has a very specific nasal sound that sounds like this. Stage 
stage two is when using the gate modified through the envelope generator, we give a shape over time to what the filter is going to do. For example, we can create a delay before the filter reaches the frequency that we've set, like so. So it opens slowly. Or we can create that second level with the sustain control and make the filter start where we set the frequency, but then close to a lower level over time. And the length of time is dictated by the decay control and the level that we're gonna reach is dictated by the sustain. For example, like this. closes over time to a second level, but it's still there. Or we can do both. We can start it slowly, it reaches the frequency, and then decays to a second level, like so. And it can be much quicker, of course. This is the filter moving over time controlled by the envelope generator that is triggered by the gate. So we have the three oscillators and the noise getting into the mixer, and then they blend all together and go into the filter. And then we have the gate controlling both how the output VCA is gonna work, or, and then another clone of the gate goes into the other envelope generator, and that controls the shape of the filter. Okay, bye, go plug things in, have fun.